This video is going to demonstrate how to use the arc tool. This video covers how to use the arrow keys and the F key to aid you in using the arc tool. You will also see how to use guides and grids while designing. Let's start by creating a new document. I'm going to go up to print doc, create new, print document. You could also go up to file, new document. And I'm going to give this document a name. Go ahead and call it your name dash arc dash tool. We're going to make sure that it only has one artboard. Lot size should be letter size paper. You want to make sure the units are set in inches and that it's set up in portrait. Once you've done all of that, simply go ahead and click OK. Now a good thing to do whenever you create a document is to save it right off the bat. The reason you want to save your documents right away is so that if your computer crashes or something happens, you have the document saved. And sometimes the computer will even back up your document if you've saved it recently or it'll store a backup file. So let's go ahead and save the document. I went to File, Save As, and I'm going to go inside my Q1 folder and I'm going to go inside of Illustrator. Now notice when I go to save the document, the file name is what I've already named it. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this named as your name, Arc Tool, and I'm going to click on Save. And then it asks me which version of Illustrator I want to save it as. I'm going to keep it at the current version and click OK. Now with this done, if I want to save my document throughout the process, all I have to do is press Control and S on the keyboard or go up to File and then Save. This will save my document while I'm working. And if there's an issue, such as a power outage, I'll still have my document saved and I won't have lost all the work that I've put into it. Now let's go into the Arc Tool. First of all, the Arc Tool is found underneath the Line Segment Tool. If you click on the Line Segment Tool and hold it, you can see there's a couple other tools here. We're actually going to tear off this tool panel so we can see these tools separate. To tear off the panel, we're going to go ahead and click on this arrow next to them. Let me show you that again. To click and find the arc tool, you click and hold on the line segment tool and we're going to go to this little triangle or this arrow and tear off this toolbox. This allows us to put the toolbox wherever we want on the screen. The arc tool, just like it says, creates arcs. You can draw different arcs based on where you start and where you end, you can get arcs. Now this tool sometimes gets frustrating for people because they want the arc to be a different angle or they want it to be uh, more concave or more convex. So let me show you how you can change the settings on this arc tool. Let me delete these arcs that I've drawn. I'm going to click on the arc tool. Now I could either single click without moving the mouse or sometimes it's easier to just press enter on the keyboard. This brings up the window with all the options. I can change the slope that I have inside it shows me a preview of what it's going to look like as well as I can change the size of my arc. So I'm going to change the ax x axis to be one inch. So I type one in. You don't have to type in the in. You could just leave it at one if it's already set in inches. But I like to type in the inches to make sure I'm in the right one. Then I click OK. Nothing has happened. I need to click without dragging. I click without dragging. It's going to show me the dialog where everything is set up. I click OK and there is my arc. So I can go ahead and draw lots of arcs and it's great. But let me show you how you can get more control over these arcs. If I want to draw an arc, which I'm doing right here, and I realize that it needs to be more concave or less concave, uh, maybe more convex. If I use the up and down arrows, notice how I can change the slope of this arc. If I press the up arrow, which I'm doing now, you can see the arc goes up. If I press the down arrow, the arc goes down. Let's say I have my arc perfect, but it's just facing the wrong direction. If I press F on the keyboard, I can flip the direction of my arc. So F will flip the, the direction of your arc. Arrow keys will change the slope of your arc. Now with that, let's go ahead and use the arc tool to build some basic shapes, such as a circle, maybe a four-pointed star, and a couple of other things. First of all, a circle is simply four arcs combined. If I were to draw a circle here, let me bring down my slope a little bit. I could start drawing this, come over here, 
I can draw. Now, you may be looking at this and thinking, this doesn't really look like a very good circle. And you're right. That's because I was just eyeballing it, trying to get a shape that looked like a circle. If I want to get more precise on a circle and get more specific, Illustrator has a built-in tool to help you with this. It is called a grid tool. Let me delete this circle here. I'm going to go up to view and I'm going to go down to show grid. Now you can see I now have this grid. These are each one inch squares. I'm going to zoom in control plus and I want to scroll up here so I can get kind of to the top. I'm going to create a circle that has a two inch diameter and I'm going to use this grid to help me create it. So I'm simply going to click on my arc tool. I'm going to choose the intersecting point of the grid and what I want to do is create an arc from this point to this point which would give a give it an X length of one and a Y length of one. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this up here. Maybe I'll bring the arc down just a little bit and then I'm going to do the same thing over here and it looks like I'm not going to make a circle again I should have left that arc up a little bit more I can draw this circle based on these points it's going to give me a much better uh, more accurate circle now notice how my arc is wrong there it needs to be flipped I press F on the keyboard and I can flip it I'm going to go ahead and delete this first arc that I created and draw it again. And I'm going to press the F key on the keyboard and my circle looks much better than my first attempt at drawing a circle freehand. So this allows you to line up or organize your drawings on a grid. I'm going to click on the grid, the arc tool again. This time I'm going to create a slope coming down here. I'm going to click where these two, where these lines intersect. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create another line coming here, only I want to flip it this time. And so now I, have, now I have this slope that goes down. When you're drawing, sometimes you want your drawing to be very precise. And by eyeballing it, you may get close enough, but not quite right. So let me show you how you can get something to snap to one of these points or where the lines intersect in Illustrator. If you go up to view, go down to where it says snap to grid or snap to point, you can see I already have snap to point turned on. And what that does is it allows my line to snap right to where two lines intersect. If I don't have that turned on, I can draw and have this be a little bit more organic, uh, not as precise. But if I need it to be precisely in that location, Again, you just go up to view, snap to point, and you can see it's kind of going to jump. Let me zoom in a little bit, control plus. When I get close to one of those points, it kind of jumps to where it needs to be. So again, you can use the grid to snap to a point. You can also go up to view and snap to grid. All the snap to does is it takes your line and it attracts it to either the line or the point, depending on which option you have selected. Let me show you another object that you can create. Let's say I wanted to create a four-pointed star down here. I'm going to use my arc tool again. And I'm just going to draw from one point to another. And I'm going to go over one inch, draw from one point to another. I'm going to come down here, draw from one point to another. And this one I need to flip. I press the F key. And maybe I want to have some sort of tail coming off my star. I can do that as well. So now I have my shooting star that I created with the arc tool. So let me zoom out to 100%, control one. And you can see everything here. If I wanted to zoom in on a point to make sure it's perfect, I'm gonna press control plus a few times. Let's say I wanted to zoom in here and move around. When you are zoomed in and you need to move around, if you press spacebar on the keyboard, notice how my cursor turns into a hand. What this is doing is it's basically selecting the hand tool and allowing you to move around. 
But by pressing the space bar, I don't have to come over, select the hand tool. I can simply press the space bar and move around my design to make sure everything is lined up where I want it to be. This is a great way to keep working without having to come over and switch to the hand tool. Let me zoom back out, control one to zoom into 100%. And you can see here are a couple of basic shapes or lines that we have drawn using the arc tool. Once I have completed my design, I can then turn off this grid and see just my design. To turn off the grid, go up to view, hide grid, and the grid is now gone. Another great feature that you can use is called Smart Guides. If you go up to View and you go down to Smart Guides, you can turn on Guides and notice how when I move my cursor around, there's a green line that starts showing me where I am in relation to other objects on the page. Whether I'm straight aligned with it, if I'm aligned with a couple of different things. So I could also create an object this way. If I wanted to draw a circle, let's say, going to flip this. I can then make sure that I'm lined up here and I can line up with the bottom. I'm going to press F and I'm going to draw another section. Press F and I want to line up right there. And that green line is indicating that I this end point is in line with this start point. And so by doing this you can also create objects without having to use a grid. Once again, these are called smart guides, and it's a green line that you can turn on to help you see where endpoints or different parts of the line match up with your current drawing or your current design. After you have completed the assignment, experiment using the smart guides and see how they can benefit you in your designing. Save this document as your name, Arc Tool, create a PDF of this document and turn it in where your instructor wants the file stored.